Welcome everyone to our webinar on post-project applications and change requests. It's now 2 p.m., so let's get started. My name is Allison Mostowich, and I'm the Manager of Outreach and Engagement at Emissions Reduction Alberta. Thank you for joining us today. Before we get started, let's go over a few housekeeping items. There's quite a few people attending today's webinar, so all microphones have been muted, just to make sure there aren't any interruptions. Throughout the presentation, you can submit your questions to our team through the control panel's questions feature. If you have any technical issues that you can't resolve or need to leave early, we will be posting a recording of this webinar on the ESB program website on the program resources page. It will include both the presentation and the QA session. So today we'll begin with an update on the ESB program, its progress, and some tips for submitting successful applications. We'll also be providing some tips that will help you progress through the program as smoothly as possible. We'll then be joined by the Inerva and Summerhill team who are supporting ERA with the implementation of the ESB program. They'll guide us through the post-project applications and change requests and provide context around those processes. The webinar will end with a Q&A period. If you recall, we asked for questions to be submitted in advance to make sure we're covering all the information you want. We'll start with those questions and then move on to the questions you send in during the presentation today. So today we have Luca Youngen, ERA's Energy Savings for Business Program Manager, who will provide an update on the progress of the program. Then Summerhill's Patrick McMahon and Inerva's Myron Shikanta will take us through post-project applications and change requests. Now let's get into it. Here's Luca to kick off today's presentation. Thanks, Allison. We're happy to see a great interest in the Energy Savings for Business program. At this time, we've reserved almost 50% of the available incentive funding for project applications. This includes the 30% of the total incentive budget dedicated to solar PV which reached full program subscription in late March. We also received a large volume of applications during the first three months of the program. This led to some delays in application turnaround, but we have since addressed the turnaround times and thank you for your patience while we were doing so. Participants and contractors can now expect applications to be turned around in five business days. This means reviewing and approving applications or reviewing and issuing information requests. As such, having a fully completed application will speed up turnaround times. We encourage everyone to continue submitting applications to the ESB program. We have almost 300 measures available for incentives, including waste energy recovery, organic rank and cycle, and increased incentives for smaller CHP sizes, both of which were added early this week. Please continue to check the website for program updates and new additions to the eligible measures list. You can submit multiple applications for your sites as long as you're under the project and parent company limits. The program implementation team is currently working on giving participants the ability to grant their contractors additional access to their applications. The application system was originally designed to give participants full access to the applications while restricting contractors to specific details. We are hoping future changes to the system will give contractors more flexibility while ensuring participants maintain proper control over their applications. The program has now been open for a short three and a half months and the early results have been encouraging. In terms of registration, general interest is very high. Over 800 contractors and nearly 1,200 participants have registered so far. We have almost 1,000 project applications well underway, with 426 projects submitted for pre-approval and 563 pre-approved, which means they are under construction. As you can see from the green circles on the map, with the size of the circle corresponding to the incentive spend, we have seen a good diversity of uptake throughout the province. In terms of project size, we are seeing that the focus on small businesses is paying off with lots of projects receiving $10,000 in incentives or less. There are some larger projects that hit our 250,000 incentive limit, but on average projects are smaller at around $24,000 in incentives. In terms of subscription, we are one third of the way through the program, but we have already received requests for nearly 50% of our incentive budget. We are also already set to achieve over 400,000 tons of CO2 equivalent over the equipment life with approved projects, which is 40% of our planned target. In terms of the application submission process, and as mentioned in previous webinars, submitting an incomplete application will not secure funding. Incentives are only reserved after the pre-project application is approved. 
We highly encourage all participants and contractors to double check that they are providing the correct information and documents when submitting a pre-project application. Applications without sufficient information will prompt our review team to send information requests, which will create further delays in application turnaround. To reduce delays, the ESP program team has created a number of resources to guide applicants and contractors through their application journey. These resources include the program guidebook, the application guide, and the measure-specific checklists. The measure checklists outline the information and documents required specific to the measures included in your application. The ESP program guidebook is a document that supports the participant terms and conditions. It expands on many of the sections in the terms and conditions using helpful diagrams and tips to keep you on track. Finally, the online application instructions takes you through the various application types in the program portal. More in depth in the program guide, this tool demonstrates what a successful submission should look like through step-by-step -step screenshots. You can find all of these documents as well as additional resources on the ESP program website. Submitting an application with sufficient information will not only encourage faster turnaround times, but it'll also ensure a smoother post-project application process. As part of the pre-approval process, each project will receive an application summary that clearly states a submission deadline. Projects that fail to meet that deadline risk losing their funding. Pre-approval reservations are generally valid for up to six months from the date that the approval is granted. We know large CHP, organic rank and cycle, solar PV, and geothermal can take longer than that. So these project types may request timeline extensions at pre-approval and will be reviewed and approved on a case-by-case -case basis. The longest funding reservation permitted within the program is 12 months. Any approved deadline extensions will also clearly be shown on the application approval form. ESB is intended to be a short-term stimulus program. As such, some project types may be extended until June 30th, 2022 at the latest. In order to be eligible to receive incentives through ESB, your project must be fully constructed and the required post-project application submitted by June 30th, 2022. Fully constructed refers to the measures for which you applied, including the measure itself or any eligible expenses, even if it's part of a larger project. And with that, I will now pass it off to Patrick and Myron to take you through how to submit a post-project application and change request. Thanks, Luca. I'm Patrick McMahon, the Contractor Experience Manager on the Unerva Summerhill team. We're proud to support Emissions Reduction Alberta through the delivery of the Energy Savings for Business program. To those on the line, thank you for calling into the webinar today and for participating in the program. Today's webinar will cover the processes to submit a post-project application and change requests. I'm joined by Unerva's Myron Srikantha, who will help provide context on both application types and review common scenarios. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing well. Let's get started. Aaron, when should participants start a post-project application? So participants can start working on their post-project application if they do not have to submit a change request. Uh, they should only also only start their post-project application after the project has been completed or the measure has been installed. And can you confirm who can start the post-project application? Yes, so for post-project applications, the participant must initiate the process, but similar to the pre-project application, the contractor will be able to assist them with adding necessary information and the documentation. And what types of additional documentation will be required through the post-project application process? So for the post-project applications, we, all, uh, we require all applications to include a relevant invoice, uh, proof of payment, and then any other documents outlined by the pre-approval notice, uh, the measure checklists, or the terms and conditions. So for example, if you had a solar PV, CHP, or waste energy recovery project, uh, you would need to provide the microgeneration agreement. Um, and then for example, for certain projects such as ground source heat pumps or CHP or solar PV, you would also need to provide electrical safety permits. Thanks, Myron. We'll take a few minutes later on to discuss invoices and proof of payment, but first let's take a look at the post-project application. To begin the post-project application, the first step is for the participant to log into the program portal. Once they've signed in, they'll scroll down to the Applications Overview section of the homepage. Find the application associated with the completed project by using the filter tool to the right of Applications Overview and select Post Project Applications from the dropdown. Once you've located it, click on the Complete Application on the bottom right-hand corner to start the process. There are seven steps within this application. 
As you might observe, they are very similar to the steps in the pre-project application with only a few changes. The first step will require you to review contractor details, project details, project facility summary, then measure and project summaries. You'll then be able to add new documents, update the payee information, and lastly, review the application summary before hitting Submit. As previously mentioned, only the participant can start the post-project application. At step one, you must confirm the identity of your contractor. If the participant changed contractors from the pre-approval application, they can choose a different eligible contractor from the dropdown at this stage. They will then be given the option to grant the contractor permission to access and contribute to the application. If the contractor is granted access to the application, the system will alert your contractor by email that this has taken place. It'll be the participant's responsibility to ensure the application is completed and submit the, the application ultimately, with or without the intervention of the contractor, and to ensure that all the information is accurate. In step two of the post-project application, the participant must also review the project details and will be required to add the actual uh, project end date. Since the project should have been completed at this time, the actual project end date must be a date from the past. Please note that the estimated project start and estimated project end date cannot be changed. Step three is a review of the facility summary. This section is locked and cannot be changed. Contractors will be able to assist participants starting at step four, the measures and project summary. Here you'll find a list of the measures included on your pre-project application. You can remove measures that are not no longer part of your application by clicking the Remove button. However, please be careful when removing measures. Once they have been removed, you will not be able to restore them to your application. Every measure must be updated before proceeding. Measures that have not been updated will be highlighted in green. To update them, click the Update or Edit icons to bring up the Measures Details screen. Here you'll be able to change the quantity and size of your measure and update the specification sheets, Energy Star ID, and DLC product ID as required. Once those changes have been made, scroll down to add the actual project costs. These figures must align with the invoices you are planning to submit. All other fields within this screen will be locked. Once a measure has been updated, the system will automatically populate the post-project applicable incentive column. You will only be able to proceed to the next step once this column is uh, no longer includes a $0 value. During step five, participants and contractors will be able to upload documents such as invoices and proof of payment. This section of the application process features reminders of the additional documentation requirements. You'll also be able to see a summary of all the documents previously submitted and edit the document name. Here's a tip. Please name all files with relevant descriptions so that the application review team can quickly identify what they are to accelerate their review. Once all files have been uploaded and properly named, click Save and Proceed to move to the next step. Step six is the payee summary stage and is only accessible by the participant. Here they will choose who will receive the incentive payment. They can assign the incentive to their business or have it sent to the eligible contractor associated with the project. Please ensure the names match the bank account information and full legal names. When you're ready, click save and proceed to move to step seven, the application summary. This is where the participant can review the details of the application, including facility details, measure details, documents, etc. Before submitting the application, the participant must also agree to the representations and warranties required by the program. Once these statements have been acknowledged, the submit button becomes available. The system will confirm that you wish to submit your application. At this point, you can choose to go back to review your application or submit it, and that's it. A large part of the review process focuses on the invoices submitted. The team will send information request notices if they find invoices do not include sufficient information. 
Byron, could you please tell us what information should be included on the invoice? Yeah, sure thing, Patrick. So all invoices should include the participant name and address, the contractor's name, the invoice date, and the make and model numbers of the installed equipment. And then for each measure, uh, essentially you'll have the make and model number of the installed equipment, but you should also have then the costs uh, broken out for those for each of those measures by equipment and material uh, for labor and then design and other costs. And then the, we should make sure that the invoice itself, the costs match what's in the application uh, in the actual project costs. Along those same lines, will applications be required to submit proof of payment? Uh, yes, they will, Patrick. So this can be pretty simple. It can just be a screenshot or a photo, and it should include the contractor's signature or paid stamp. Um, we can also accept copies of the process check, a screenshot of the online banking account, or a debit or a credit card statement, um, even a copy of the a statement or the screenshot of the accounting system. Uh, what we want to make sure is we don't have any sensitive information there. So please redact anything such as card numbers or account numbers uh, from whatever document that you're providing us. During the course of the ESB program, applications will be selected for additional QA, QC, and will require site visits. Brian, can you tell us what these visits will look like during COVID-19? Yeah, so to keep everyone as safe as possible during the pandemic and while there's still uh, health and safety kind of uh, restrictions, uh, what we'll do is we'll allow for video conference to help facilitate the site visit. Um, and we also may ask for some photos to be submitted with your post project application. So there's no reason for us to come on site physically. We will try to do it as virtually as possible. Um, we do recommend, though, that during your project installation process, uh, you do take photos, uh, especially of nameplates or other documentation that might be difficult to find afterwards. Uh, we do recommend that the photos do help with site visits. Here's a great question. When can businesses expect to receive the incentive payments? So we are going to be issuing payments electronically, uh, so directly into the bank accounts, and they should be received within four weeks of the post-project application approval. Uh, what we will be doing is we'll be reviewing the payment process uh, with all of you in a webinar next month. Thanks for helping us through this post-project application, Myron. Understanding these expectations ought to make this phase of the program participant participation easier for participants, contractors, and the review team too. Now let's turn our attention to change requests. As we mentioned, you should not start a post-project application if you are required to submit a change request. Myron, can you tell us when a change request is needed? Yes, Patrick. So change requests essentially allow participants to make changes to their application after they've received the pre-project application approval uh, but before they begin their post-project application. So it's essentially after you've received your pre-approval, but you haven't actually started your post-project application yet. Um, and it should be mentioned that these changes must be reviewed and approved by the ESB program team. And who can submit a change request? So the way the system's been designed, only participants can submit a change request. Um, and again, this process is only available after your post-pre-project, sorry, this process is only available after your pre-project application has been approved. And then the moment you start your post-project application, uh, we disable the change request. So that's why participants should only start a post-project application um, after the project is finished. And if they're confident, they do not need to submit a change request, which is what we're gonna be going through next. What are some circumstances where a participant would need to submit a change request? Yeah, so for change requests, they'll be required uh, in, a few different in a few different situations. Uh, so the first one is when a project timeline has been extended. Uh, the second one is if there's a new incentive amount that's more than 110% of the pre-approved incentive amount. Um, also, if there's been any new measures added to the project or when there were changes to specific measure details. And then finally, you can submit a change request as well uh, if you want to change your contractor at the pre-project stage. Uh, you can do that as well uh, through a change request. That's great to know. Now let's take a look at how to submit a change request through the participant view of the program portal. First, participants will need to identify the application overview section of the program portal home screen. Then, locate your application by choosing the pre-approval applications filter. Once you find it, you will see two icons on the bottom left-hand corner. The first button will allow you to submit a change request. The second button will allow you to view your application. For this demonstration, we'd select the Change Request button. 
This will bring you to the change request form. Look over the available information to ensure that you're in the right application. Then use the drop down to select your change request type. A pop-up will appear asking you to confirm that you are looking to submit a change request. Click Confirm. A message will then appear on the screen to verify the successful submission. The system will also send an email confirming the change request submission. Myron, you previously listed reasons why a participant will need to submit a change request. Could you tell us more about that? Uh, yeah, sure thing, Patrick. So let's start with timeline extensions. Uh, so what happens is projects are expected to be finished within six months after receiving the pre-approval. And what you have noticed is the system automatically sets a project completion deadline on your application accordingly. So if your project will take longer than that project completion deadline, which is uh, set at six months after the pre-approval, you have to submit a change request to get an a, approved extension. So the ESB program can grant up to a total of 12 months to complete the project, uh, provided that the completion date occurs before June 30th. So all change requests for extensions must be submitted at least 60 days before the project completion deadline. So we're still uh, a couple of months away from anyone's first project completion deadline, uh, but we do, uh, as we are quickly approaching the summer, uh, we do uh, encourage you to start submitting uh, change requests if you do need a project uh, extension as soon as possible. Last week, what we did was we sent emails to participants and contractors where we thought that their project completion deadline might occur before their estimated project end date. So if you received one of these emails, uh, please review your application. And if you do need to uh, indeed submit a change request for an extension, uh, please submit a change request right away if needed. Um, and then the other thing we'll also be doing is as your project completion deadlines come up, uh, we will be sending email notices to you, but we do encourage you to be proactive with submitting extension requests. If you think you need an extension, uh, please uh, submit a change request and reach out if you have any questions. You also mentioned that a change request will be required if there's an increase in incentives. Could you tell us more about that? Uh, yeah, for sure. So we always understand that project costs tend to change during execution. And as a result, it could potentially change the expected incentive amount as well if the cap came into play. So if participants are doing their project and they realize, wait a minute, we're just adding a lot more measures now, or uh, now the project costs have gone up and the a previous cap now doesn't apply anymore. Um, if they notice that their incentive amount now uh, would be more than 110% of the pre-approved incentive amount, uh, then you do need to submit a change request to get approval for that. And again, it has to come in 60 days before the project completion deadline. So we do encourage you to look at this uh, as soon as you can and see if you do need to apply for an, an increased incentive amount. Um, so participants looking to install additional measures as part of the project, can add them to an existing pre-project application um, as long as it really doesn't impact your project completion date too. Um, and that's really simple. You just submit a change request for that incentive increase. What we do suggest you do is review the latest version of the eligible measures list as we have added several new technologies and categories since the program's launch. So for example, now participants can also apply for the organic rank and cycle measures as of earlier this week. Uh, and please keep in mind that the ERA will be required to approve certain requests specifically in instances where incentive funding is limited. So if you do think you have an, a requirement to get an increased incentive um, that will be greater than what was pre-approved, uh, then please do submit a change request, but please keep in mind that if incentive funding is limited, um, it may be difficult to approve that request. What happens if a participant needs to update the details of the measures included in their application? That's a great question, Patrick. So as we just saw in the demonstration you went through, uh, the post-project application does lock several fields on the measure screen. So if you need to change one of those details, or if a change in your project will impact compliance with the terms and conditions or measure eligibility, uh, you should submit a change request. So for example, um, if you're doing a solar PV project and in your pre-approval, you indicated that uh, your solar yield was gonna be 77%, um, and now when you actually went and did your project, it's actually dropped uh, below the 75%. Um, then you will need to submit a change request if your solar yield calculation is different now um, so that we can take a look at that and then issue a new pre-approval for that. So there are examples of times where um, it might be the same project or measure, but just details in the application have changed. And if those details are significant, significant enough, uh, then we do encourage you to submit a change request so that we can take a look at that. 
Once a participant has submitted a change request, what can they expect to happen next? So in terms of next steps, uh, as I mentioned, all change requests do get uh, reviewed, uh, other than the changing the contractor one. Um, so if you are requesting a project timeline extension, then the system will update your application with a new project completion deadline uh, when you receive approval on the extension. If you are requesting an incentive increase, or if you're adding new measures, or if you'd like to change the measure details, what we essentially do is we approve the change request and then we unlock the pre-project application. Then you just update your application and submit the new changes, and then it will just go through an expedited approval process. Um, and then, as I mentioned, if you are changing your contractor, uh, what we'll do is we'll just unlock the pre-project application, and then you can change your uh, you can change your contractor and then hit submit again. Thanks for walking us through that, Myron. I think we have a better understanding of post-project applications and change requests that will help the audience move from project complete to incentive paid.